and welcome everyone to this installment of Online Art Club. If you've been following along with our past videos, you know that I'm Chelsea and I'm an educational program specialist at the Palmer Museum of Art. Online Art Club is our series of videos which explore common themes and subjects found in works of visual art across mediums and time periods. With the help of the educational team at the Palmer, we present art making approaches in each video inspired by our theme. Today, we will consider one of the most basic and foundational elements of art, line. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, lines? I've been drawing lines since I was little. What's the big deal? Well, lines may seem trivial at first glance, but in reality, lines are found in almost all works of visual art. Lines can be used in many different ways to create a variety of effects. First, let's talk about the different kinds of lines. How many different types of lines can you think of? Straight lines, sure. Um, curved lines, curly lines, thick lines, thin lines, even spiral lines. Lines can also be horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. Horizontal lines go across the page side to side like a horizon, and vertical lines go up and down the page from top to bottom. Diagonal lines span from one corner to the other. The way an artist uses line can completely change the way a work of art looks and the impact it has on the viewer. Lines are used to emphasize parts of an image and lead our eye across the page. Lines can show movement, energy, and even convey a sense of calm. We use lines to create simple sketches and sometimes as the central component in a composition. What can't lines do? We can find thousands of examples of lines at the Palmer Museum of Art. Let's take a look at just a few to see how lines can be used in different ways. One of the most important types of lines we see at the Palmer are contour lines. Artists use contour lines or outlines to define the shapes and objects they see when drawing or sketching a scene. Here is a drawing by John Marin of the Brooklyn Bridge. In this drawing, the artist uses bold lines to sketch the outline of the bridge. He then added more lines, highlighting the textures and conveying a sense of movement and energy in the scene. In this drawing by Simon Dinnerstein, he uses thin back black contour lines to define the organized and controlled architecture of the buildings, in contrast to the irregular organic lines that make up the bare branches of the trees. Mary Vinmuk uses contour lines here to outline not only the face and body of a person, but also to create decorative patterns and textures on the wall and fabric. Sometimes lines make up the whole composition, like in these more geometric works. Here, Hiroshi Murata uses graph paper to grid out colorful straight and bent lines. Bridget Riley uses curved and wavy lines to create this simple work that reminds me of the movement of water. Lines are also a great way to add decoration to an object or picture. These vessels, created in Peru, use zigzag and straight lines to add visual interest to their work. One of my favorite ways artists use lines is to express emotion or movement. Artists use expressive lines to represent qualities that are felt rather than seen, like movement, temperature, and emotion. Here, Carl Schrag uses expressive lines to show the radiating sun and imply movement in the grass. Jim Dine used scribbled, scratchy lines in his self-portrait. What do you think he was saying by adding these lines around his face? Does it feel calm or frantic? Does it feel heavy or light? It makes me think of the way I feel when I have buzzing thoughts going all through my mind. Emma Amos' self-portraits uses lines to express her inner thoughts, but in a different way. Here, she uses multicolor lines to define the spirals of her curly hair and black lines to create symbols like a hand, a planet, and a treble clef. Amos also draws a line down the middle of her face, defining her multifaceted identity as a multiracial woman. This work shows how powerful lines can be as not only compositional, but also conceptual elements. This last work by Wasley Kandinsky is totally made up of bold, expressive lines. This work isn't about depicting a scene, but rather conveying a feeling through the movement, gesture, and interaction of lines. Well, that's a lot of lines. I'm thinking of all the ways I could use line in my art. Let's give lines a try. When I started working on this project, I thought it'd be interesting to use strips of paper as lines. I do a lot of collage with paper as well as sewing, so I decided to try and weave the strips of paper like a textile. For this weaving, I used construction paper, semi-transparent vellum, scissors, and tape. First, I cut out a bunch of half-inch stri strips of paper in a variety of colors. I also cut a couple thin and thick strips to give me some variety. I decided to measure mine out, but they don't have to be cut perfectly. After I had a bunch of strips cut, I began laying them out one next to the other. 
Then I laid a long piece of tape across the top to keep them in place. After that, I started weaving in strips of paper. To weave the paper, start on the left side. Take the strip over the first vertical strip and then under the next. Keep going over and under the strips until you reach the end. When you start on the next row, begin by weaving under the first strip and over the next, opposite from the row above. I tried adding some thick and thin strips to vary the lines throughout the weaving. After I got all my strips in place, I carefully flipped it over and added tape on the back to hold everything together. The end result was a very colorful and line-filled composition. I had a lot of strips left over, so I made a second weaving. It was fun to see how the colors interacted differently depending on what I chose for the vertical and horizontal lines. These were really fun and would be a great project for kids and adults. Let's look at how the rest of the team used line in their project. My favorite way to work with line is just by doodling. For this project, I filled my page with continuous line doodles and drawings. A combination of portraits, flowers, and other objects, each image was drawn with one continuous connected line. Each time, all I did was put my pen on the paper, move it in different directions, and pick it back up when the drawing was finished. I followed that same process, but came up with a different result each time. Lines don't have to be straight to be correct. Sometimes continuous line drawings can be a challenge, but they are so fun. I highly suggest trying some. Today we are going to draw Riley style optical art. I will decorate the text using lines. For this prompt you will need a piece of paper, a pencil, and a colored marker. Or you can use whatever you want such as watercolor or colored pencils. First of all, I will draw a text palmer on the paper. I will use bold markers for the letter. You will notice that letters also have straight and curvy lines. And then we will draw wavy lines across the letters. The wavy lines will create shapes and they will divide spaces. If you want to give more vibration and movement, you can draw more lines and make them narrower. Now we will color all the spaces. I will use only two colors, blue and yellow, for a contrast. To make a vibrant pattern, you are going to color in every segment. Remember that the pattern should be blue, yellow, blue, yellow. Repeat the pattern all the way around. After the coloring, we are all done. It seems like letters are dancing in the waves. Try to decorate your name or any shapes with the lines and patterns. I'm excited to visit Online Art Club this week. I'm featuring the element of line by making a continuous line drawing, meaning every line is connected. My subject is a three-layered birthday cake, since my family all have birthdays around now and I thought it would be fun to make a birthday card. I started out in my sketchbook though, first with a very simple outline of a three-layered cake on a stand with a few candles on top. This helped me see how to develop my line into the object I wanted to draw. Then I had to think about where to start and how to keep moving around in order to complete the drawing in one continuous line. I see I picked up my pencil now and then, which I was trying not to do. Boy, this takes practice. And there were times that I changed my mind about where to go next and I drew over earlier lines, but that's what sketching is for, to think things through and figure it out. For my card version, I used a black Sharpie to draw because I wanted my line to be bold and clear and to be the main feature in the finished drawing. You can see that I used loose, wavy, swirling and curling lines because they seem energetic, friendly and fun to me. All things that I associate with birthday cakes and the long curves, they look like icing or decoration flowing down the sides of the cake. You'll see in a minute that the only way I could connect the cake stand in a continuous line was to draw back over an earlier line. So here it comes. I'll have to figure that out for the next time. 
But once I finished the line drawing, I chose a few marker colors to finish it off. I'll skip ahead on the video though to save time because you all know how to color. Even though this was really simple and quick to do, making a continuous line drawing it really made me think a lot about my strategy of movement as well as different ways I could vary the quality of the line. It was fun and turned into a unique handmade card. I plan to do this again and maybe if I keep practicing I'll master keeping my pen on the paper. <laughs> Even if you don't want to make a card I recommend trying this. Pick something simple to draw to start out and see where your line takes you. Thank you for stopping by to learn about Lime today. Show us what you made by posting a picture on Facebook or Instagram using the hashtag Palmer Online Art Club. See you next time.